You know, I'd like to say I've been in this business long enough. Nothing surprises me. But the extent to which people are taking advantage of this pandemic when so many people are suffering from it, now come scam COVID testing sites where they are gathering your credit card information, your insurance information, your birth date, your social security number. We all know what's done with those, with all that information. They steal your identity. There have been people in DFW who've been going to scam sites, pop-up sites, not realizing they're not legitimate. This is really horrifying because when somebody finds themselves in a place where they know that they need to get tested, they're either dealing with sickness themselves or themselves or a loved one is or a close friend is. So they're dealing with that and then they're trying to figure out where can I go, sometimes waiting in line for hours. And these fake sites can look real, right? They, they have signs, they have mm -hmm. tents, they have hazmat suits, they, they do test you with a test and it seems really legitimate. So we wanted to share some of the red flags, some of the things that would indicate that this pop-up testing site, now this is different than an ER, but this pop-up testing site would not be legitimate. You would want to make sure that the test is authorized by the FDA. Um, you can look at the organization's list of different tests that they have. And then of well, course- Well, those are for the take-home tests. That's the list of, of precautions for take-home. We're not even there yet. That, those are people scamming you with the, with the with the at home tests. So let's go through. So some here's of what they're the saying you should do about these pop up sites: get a referral from your doctor. Well, not everybody. Oh come on! Is able to go through that Let process. Let me know whose doctor is actually even calling you back right now for a referral on this. That's Unless the you thing. go to like mm -hmm. one of those private concierge type places. I mean, or you live in a really small community. That's right. Or you have a concierge doctor. Um, go to your state or local health department's website. If a pop-up testing site in your area is not on the Department of Health and Human Services website, you probably shouldn't go there. Um, also, if they're asking for your social security number, a social security number is not necessary. And they don't take your credit card. For a COVID test, a credit card would not be taken. Mm -mm. Now, that's the, the exception to this is if you are going to, there are some emergency room situations where if you go in and you choose to pay, like you're choosing to pay for, you know, using your credit card, I, just, I don't know, we wouldn't necessarily call it a scam, but you can get it for free. You don't have to pay. Well, here's the, here's the other thing they're saying. Check with your local police or sheriff's office about whether or not a certain site is legitimate. If there is a large-scale operation that has popped up in your jurisdiction, listen, I mean, our police officers are spread thin. They're out there patrolling. They're doing the best they can. But are, are they not cross-checking that certain sites are legitimate and that these large-scale operations with fake signage and lines of cars and people getting tested aren't, aren't scams? I mean, are they not running down that list and saying now that looks suspicious that parking lot i don't remember that being designated as a site for testing and there's a, a lot of cars a mile long right right i mean right because wouldn't you need to get a permit i would think you'd wouldn't have to get a permit that you'd, that you'd, and, and, and you, you put a request into the police department to have it patrolled and and it would be on the police department's roster that we need to go check and patrol around these sites just to make sure there's no crowd control issues etc so to that end i guess Police maybe would know, but why are they not shutting them down and finding them? That's that's the question that remains unanswered mm. with the coverage we've seen. As for the tips you were giving with those take-home kits, yes, on Amazon, people are packaging up what look like legitimate testing kits, and they are fake. Well, Amazon's the wild, wild west. I mean, you could get a, a counterfeit hand cream. You could think you're buying Chanel makeup, and it could be <laughs> Chanel makeup. They I mean, do the best they can, but there are independent oh, vendors on there who are scamming. there's on yeah. Amazon. So, so that, that uh, as you said, get on the FDA's website, look to make sure the packaging and everything. Um, check the seller, check to see, and if you take the seller's name and you Google them with reviews, sometimes you can find that other people will warn you, yeah, I got this test, I could tell it wasn't real. There are some comments and reviews on some of these Amazon vendors that basically call them out for being scam artists, so make sure you read those before you click buy and use your credit card there, not your debit card because if you have an illegitimate purchase, you're able to then protest it with the credit card company and get your money back as opposed to a debit card. It gets a lot more complicated. Debit card's a wild, wild west, just like buying stuff on Amazon. <laughs> you're in be, the wild, wild west know, today, it's girl. Just, yeah, I'm just feeling very western with my puppy sleeves today. <laughs>